God says every beast can be taken by man, but a man doesn't know his own master. And when you think about it, Jesus warned us against each other. He said, beware of men. Because they will hate you. They will try to hurt you. And even some in the name of God will do you damage thinking they're doing God's favor. When he had did so many miracles and fed the multitude, the people rushed him. And they tried to force him into politics. They wanted to take him and make him the king. But Jesus said something very important. It was very astonishing. He said this, the scripture says, but the Lord did not give himself to man. Now he created man. But he did not give himself to man because he knew what was in men. He did not give himself to their desires concerning him. Because he knew that the heart of man was wicked and needed to change. So then you must understand that your purpose for living is not for God to give himself to you according to your desires because your heart is not right. As me and our hearts are not right. We smile one day and then we curse God the next day. One day our hearts are warm, the next day our heart is cold. We murmur, we complain, we forget all the blessings that God has bestowed upon us. As a matter of fact, we live our lives as though we forget that it is he that has created us and not we ourselves. So then, what is the purpose of church coming together to hear the word of God? Many people think it is to scratch your ears. Find the church that believes it like you believe it. Now, that is all right if what you believe is correct. I tell you, find a church that sticks with the word of God 
and that would tell you all about yourself, good with the bad. Find the message that will not lie to you. Find the message that when you receive it, it will improve you. Help you to see yourself and where you stand with the Almighty. Find one that teaches solo scriptoria, scripture only. You hear the internet is full of voices. You might say, then why does God allow all these voices to try your heart, to those that are real, to try your heart, to see if you really love God or not. Because the true sheep of God won't follow strange voices. But I'm here to say, when are you going to get sick and tired of you? Aren't you sick and tired of yourself? Your attitude, your funny ways, up and down, when you're blessed, you're happy, when there's no blessing, you're complaining and murmuring. Don't you see how foolish we look at men? We want to correct God. We got all the answers. When we get blessed, we get strong and we forget who we are and where we come from. And then we want to sit down and instruct God. The Bible says the fool says in his heart, there's no God. Could you imagine a human fool sitting down and saying, I don't believe in God? Well, sure, we're going to reach out to him in love. You understand? But in love, he needs to understand he's a fool. That's what the book says. A fool says in his heart, there's no God. Are you serious? We are so intelligent. We're so smart. Not only the preachers, but the church members. You, all of the preachers, bishops, elders, whatever you want to call the priests, church folk, mothers, we are all so smart. We know more than God. And yet, not a one of us chose our own parents. Not a one of us can tell us how we were formed in the mother's womb. Not a one of us can. We are so smart, but not a one of us has the answer to the world's problems. Not a one of us. We get together in Congress and other government buildings, Parliament, City Hall. I've been before government officials. We get together in our civil rights groups and our special interest groups. And we all, at various times, in the Kremlin, talking and putting our heads together. And every man in every country and everywhere, we're coming up with all types of great ideals in the world remains the same. What am I trying to tell you tell us? We're not what we think we are. We're not as good and we're not as smart as we think we are. Now, I feel a virtue. Y'all listen to me. For some of y'all, I don't believe Jesus is real. What happens? Now, you can call it a fairy tale if you want to. What happens if the Lord appears in a form, manifestation, a dream, or vision, or sends an angel to you and calls you to question? and start asking you concerning him. Tell me what you think of me. And you know that it's coming from heaven. What? Will you pass that exam or what? Because then you know that every word you speak, you're going to be held accountable for it right there and right then. Now, if you want to die tomorrow, Y'all stop playing game. What is church about? Clapping hands? Nah, that's not it. Why do you pray here? Because it says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. But in that praise, we give them glory. But after that praise, there should be a life of obedience living for God. But now we're smart. We're so smart. We can't abstain from fornication and adultery and drunkenness. 
but we can question God. Oh, oh, smart. We're so smart. We're so rebellious and stubborn as men. We're so caught up and panic in the simplest of things. But we want to correct God. I'm going to have to step out of that picture. I'm going to have to step out of that picture. I, I can't correct God. Well, I think God is wrong here. Well, if you think God is wrong here, give us the right answer. Give us the right answer. You take away the word of God, and what's the replacement? Don't come back with another word of God. What's the replacement? Everybody understand. Do you know the very God we make a mockery out of it? You know a prophetic play with it. Play with it. If he calls your life tonight, and you better call each other in the morning, make sure you still live. Now a lot of preachers say that it's junk. But I ain't joking because God is sick of man trying to play God. And we can't see our own filth. Young and old. Who wants to challenge the Almighty? Who wants to challenge God? You young people. Who wants to challenge God? Who wants to challenge the real God? Who wants to call him up? Who wants to challenge him with your very life? Everything you believe, everything you think, every passion that you have, who wants to put their life on the line? I say, I'm willing to live and die for everything I feel and think and believe. Who can say, I'm ready right now, if he calls me right now? I am ready. Now it can be done, but who can in here do that? What did I tell you you better do in the morning? You better call around. See, you don't play with a real prophet. You, you don't play with one. I'm trying to hear. Lord, what am I going to hear? I need to hear something. Well, I think I just heard maybe the, the last of Ecclesiastics. So I'm just making it plain. Stop playing a game with your life. Young people, because you're young, don't mean you're supposed to be ignorant. Doesn't mean you're not responsible for what you do. Let me tell you how foolish we are. God gives us teachings. He gives us standards and ways to walk by that helps us keeps us in line with him. We might not understand it all, but as we learn and grow, we see the significance and the importance of it. But what do we do? We, go, we cross the line every time. And then we blame God. You will be held accountable for every word that comes out of your mouth. I feel a virtue. I said it by the Holy Spirit. You will be held accountable for every word that comes out of your mouth. It's coming back to you. Every word, good or bad. If I were you, I start examining what has come out of my mouth. And by your own words, you shall be justified. And by your own words, you shall be judged. Now, as a prophet, if any of you think that I teach a lie, well, what, somebody say, well, what you going to tell them, Bishop? This is what I'm going to tell them. Then you live by your words. Because I'm willing to die by mine. Right now. Right here. Every teaching. Including the word of God is real. He could take me now. In the case you do, Lord, if there's anything I have not repented of, I repent of it now. What I know or don't know. Clear me. If I drop now, do not cry. Because I'm ready. I am 100% sure. If you cannot say that, then shut your mouth. Amen. 
your mouth means nothing. If your words are so right, if you're so right, and I'm just not talking on no religious things, I'm talking about anything. If you're so right, then you live by your words. Live by them. Live by your hidden thoughts and your ambitions. You live by them. Don't try to force it on everybody else. You live by them. You live by your words and let your children, their family, their father, let them live by your words. Will they go to heaven and hell following you? I'm talking to all of you. You know why, preacher? Because we as people, we are so foolish, young and old. We walk around like we are living off of our own breath. Preachers, railing preachers and coming at each other calling each other demons, and yet the same preacher that's putting out the accusation, you look at the internet, they're lying too. How blind are we as people? God is a holy God. And the word of God is true. If any of y'all think it ain't, then prove it wrong. It's going to outlive you. I'm not even wasting my time on that. You know why I'm not going to waste my time on how real God is? Because the minute we walk out of here, half of us are going to make all kinds of crazy, foolish, ignorant mistakes. It's just like talking to a drunk, talking about you need to be sober when he feels he's drunk. You're just going to turn away and walk away from that drunk. That's how I feel when it gets in the midst of people and people walk around like we all so right. Act like we ain't never made a mistake. Act like we got all the answers. And so we want to look like, oh, we something. I do something. Who you something to? Who you something to? I ain't something to a corporation that can fire you tomorrow. Because your money that really has no value. The stock market crash and forget about it. Millions of dollars in a bank that only what covers a hundred thousand or so? Are you serious? Where's your faith? Well, I need you to read, son. We're just gonna do this. Hmm? How can a whole mother correct God? I'm a correct God, but I'm a whole mother. I'm a fornicator, but you know, I don't understand why God, do you understand why you fornicate? You understand why you get drunk? You understand why you're lying? You understand why you hate your brothers and sisters without a cause? You understand why you're stealing? A thief saying, I don't trust God, a thief. A realm who's always putting people down. I, I I see these debates and things and people write into these preachers and they say, why do you all talk about people? As ministers, you shouldn't be putting people down. Because they got the cousin preachers on them. When you call each other to the cousin preachers, they return my cousin the out. They cousin preachers. If y'all were to hear them cousin preachers, you always say, well, that man going to hell. Because he'll cuss you out with the Bible open. I know some of y'all say that. And them church folks say, that man going to hell. Going to hell. You know what I say? Them church folks say, that cussing preacher going to hell. They going to hell too. They cuss as much as you. What I'm trying to say is be honest with yourself. But because you're honest, don't mean it's the right thing to do. And as for these preachers that are Throwing real accusation. It's all right to call it like it is. Jesus called Herod a fox. He didn't attack the man, he was just attacking his mannerism. Paul called the Jews uncircumcised dogs, meaning their behavior. But he didn't sit there and throw rail for rail, talk about the mama and talk about everybody and this and that. It, it's, it's Michael, the archangel, when contending, contending with the devil, he didn't throw a real accusation. He said, The Lord rebuke you. These preachers that are throwing railing accusations here, yeah, they're damned. Because that's a wrong way to do something that's right. 
You can do it. You can do a right thing in a wrong way. That's right. You don't sit up there and rail in accusations because that's a sin. Just tell it like it is. You see? And these preachers that say when they call them stupid, my God, that's what the word thou fool means in the Bible. Call no man thou fool. That word means stupid. You don't go around calling people stupid, which means good for nothing. You're in danger of the lake of fire. So you see how they condemn another preacher and they condemn it themselves? Ignorance. Soul of scriptorium. If it ain't scripture, leave it alone. Now, uh, did, did you start reading yet? Let's start reading loud and quick in verse 1. Oh, I'm talking. Read. Ecclesiastes 12. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Now, see, you got to remember God, young people, when you're young. In the games you play, in the things you do, remember the Lord, thy creator. In the days of thy youth, read. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. You start now and, and give it your heart. and you get older, you'll be able to make a good stand. Come on, preacher, I need you to keep reading. While the sun... Or the light, or the moon, or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out the windows be darkened, the doors shall be shut in the streets, and the sound of the grinding is low. And he shall rise up at the voice of a bird, and all the doors of music shall be brought low. And when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a bird. And his eyes shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken, and the fountain of the wheel be broken, and the sister. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Learn to, learn to know God now. You live in your system. What the scriptures was talking about that as you grow through life, and things come and things go. When it's all said and done. Y'all look at me. I'm a minister. I've been by the side of a lot of people talking to me. And I'm looking at them. And we're talking. And they're asking questions. And they're talking just like you all, looking at me right now. And fifth, it's simply amazing. Nobody comes in the room. Nobody leaves the room. I'm talking to them, just talking. And 15 minutes later, they're not talking anymore. At first, it shook me out. I, I don't, they said, they're talking to me. They're talking. And just like that, they ain't talking no more. And they will never talk again in their lifetime. Who can deny that? Who, a believer, unbeliever, could say that's not real? Deuteronomy said, that's the army that no man can get out of. No man can retire from that army when death calls. There's nothing you can do. Unbelievable. And then, being a, a man of faith, and people knowing of the miraculous power, the question I ask, am I going to die? Bishop, am I going to die? Am I going to be a bishop? And sometimes I do the answer because I received it.
Now, if we're so smart, and if we got all the answers, and if you're so bright and so powerful, all of us, then why don't we just take, take it on, take it off, just like that? You can't. Which leaves one simple explanation. What's that? You are not. You are not. We are in control. Thus you come. Thus you shall return. And then your spirit falls into the hands of God. And you will only be the way your life is earned. Not that we earn salvation, but according to the deeds done in your body. You will not be able to judge and hurt and fall upon nobody for your eternal destination. But they that believe in the Christ and believe in him right, he said that they shall never die. And the scriptures give us proof of that. So what I'm trying to say is, before you start boasting on how good you are, let me hear how bad you are. Let's see if you got any bad traits. Because to hear you said it, you ain't got no bad traits. To hear you talk. But understand, at least I'm honest. I'm a drunk. I'm a whole mother. I'm a fornicator. Yeah, I lie. I tell you out in a minute. At least I'm honest. I'm honest, you are. Keep this, but you're going to hell if you don't stop it, too. Now you are just all right, but you're still going to hell if you don't get it right. I don't believe in no hell, no fire. That's cool. How many people got burned up in that California fire? How many people got burned up in their house? How many people got burned up in a car? How many people get burned at home? Get burned over the stove? What you trying to say? I'm just saying. You don't believe no hell fire. I'm just saying. I you like how many people get burned up? Man got a fire, but God can't create one. He didn't create fire for man, so don't blame God for going to hell. Hell was not created for you. Hello? It was created for the devil and his angels. But hell got remodeled. It got enlarged. Why? Because men followed the devil. So God said, you want to go there? We'll make it big enough. Equal opportunity. We'll, we'll, we'll make it big enough for you. What I'm trying to say is this. Humble yourselves and follow God. Don't put your desires in the, in the traditions of men above God. Follow the word of God. Stand on it. It ain't, it ain't going nowhere. Anybody that tell you it is is a liar. And, and the truth ain't in them. Did you finish that? Let's finish it. Verse 8 says, Vanity upon vanities, said the preacher. All is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are goads and nails fastened by the master's assemblies, which are given from shepherd. And further, by these, my son, be admonished. Of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weirdness of the flesh. But let us hear the conclusion. Now Solomon, he gives out the preacher. He decided to go on a quest. He wanted to see what was greater, wisdom or just having a good time. Father had a thousand lives. None of them were saved. He built houses. He did good when he was young, but when he got older, the wives started tickling his ears and talking to him. And 
He thought he built a temple for their gods. But being one of the wisest men to live, he was still given a wise instruction. So the Lord wanted to tell you that it's possible for you to be able to give people wise instructions and you yourself be a castaway. Because you don't live by what you preach. So don't ever think about what I'm always telling people right, but can you live what's right? So don't be so tough on you always giving people the answer. But you can't find it for yourself. So God appeared to Solomon twice. Man, you need to watch it. You need to watch it. But the song says she had a praying grandmama. Solomon had a praying daddy. And God told David before the boy was born, I'm going to give him the sure mercies of David. And if he does wrong, I'm going to chastise him, but I'm not going to take my spirit from him. And Solomon did wrong. But the prayers of his father kept him. But in the end, with all his foolishness, when he got older, his wife sort of turned in his heart. See, you might be strong enough to deal with a sin while you're young or while you're fresh in God would have you. But eventually, if you don't get rid of that sin, it's going to get rid of you. Anybody hearing me? You don't have to wait until it makes you sick to get rid of it. If you know it's wrong, get rid of it. Now Solomon lost the kingdom, but God spared him. But when it was all said and done, you have to see the end of the matter. This is what the man said. When it was all over. Start at that verse again. And further by these, my son, be admonished. Of making many books, there is no end. People are going to be writing books forever and ever. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. <laughs> you get to study too much and become weary. Read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Solomon said, let me break it down to you. And this is where I'm going to close. Let me tell y'all what it all boils down to. Everybody listen. Amen. Church, they praise the Lord. Praise what does it boil down to, preacher? Fear God. Fear God. And keep his commandments. And keep his commandments. For this, this is the whole duty of man. Read. For God shall, shall bring, bring every, every work into, into judgment with, with every, every secret. Yeah. Come on. Whether it be good or whether it be good. All your secrets going to be brought out. Everything about you is going to be brought out. The excuse you're going to give him. Just know that. Keep a repentant heart. Because we're going to need that. Amen. All of us. Amen. We're going to need that repentant heart. Because sin is at the door. Temptations and sin that if you would just let down a little bit, come right in. We all need repentance. Amen. Forgiveness. That's forgiving. Amen. But what's the whole duty? That's why I stand on this word. The Bible says don't do it, I don't do it. I don't care who tells me it's all right. Because a man tells you it's all right, don't make it right. We preach and teach, walk and talk and strive to dress the way the scripture tells us, but that's what the Bible tells us. Now, if you got a problem with that, you listen to the wrong preacher. You don't sit there and go on what men tell you. And it's not so scriptorial. Scripture. So they scripture, don't you buy it? Right in your body. So what's your whole duty then? When it's all said and done, you better do right. You gotta do right before the Lord. Now just in case some of y'all was foolish enough to play with God, what I tell you to do this morning? 
Call around, make sure everybody's all right. I hope we ain't got no fools in there. You stand on God's word. You stand on God's holiness, and don't you get off of it for anybody. Because that's the only thing that's gonna keep us. Don't you compromise for no one. Because they don't have a heaven or hell for you. Take a full of virtue. Because when you give in, the very people you give in to, then they turn around and walk right over you. And you're going to put your Jesus down. You're going to put your Jesus down and they turn around and walk over you. I'm walking with Jesus. Who you walking with? But I ain't putting him down. For no one. That's the whole duty of man, is to fear God and keep his commandments. You know the Lord is dealing with your heart, then let it deal with you. If you want somebody to scratch your ears, I'm not scratching them. I'm going to tell you, straight up, straight down. I'm going to tell it just like it's written. I don't care if it's blood, not blood, relative, tell it to you. It doesn't matter. I'm going to tell it just like it is. Everybody hear me? I can say, yes, I can say, I can say, let all the saints say amen. I can say, let all the church folks say amen. Saints are those times they right? Church folks don't do no church. I can see let all the sex say man, let all the church folks say man, let all the whole mother say man, let all the fornicators say man, let all the liars say man, and let all the adulterers say man, and everything else, blah, blah. And if everybody was honest, we might get one or two out of each category, maybe. What I'm trying to say, because you come to the church, don't mean you're right. The church is the assembly of believers. But when you come to fellowship, don't think you're doing something. But you got to do something, then it'll be all right. You see what I'm saying now? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, you know what? Somebody foolish is going to say, he talking about me. I ain't calling your name. Take, take, take the flag down. They ain't calling them. They don't talk to everybody in here. From the poor pit on down. Huh? Don't y'all sit up here and come in here. I think Bishop Brian act like preachers don't sin. They some of your biggest sinners. And I don't need no preacher to say amen. In the Bible, some of your biggest sinners was preachers. Shut up, man. Holy than thou. Yeah. Some of your biggest sinners was preachers in the Bible. And guess what they said that people did? Voted them out? No. The Bible said the people loved it. Jeremiah said that's a horrible thing. The prophets and the priests ruled by their own rules and the people loved it. The preacher's a hard mother. We're going to have a hard mother party. We can fornicate it. It's all right. No, it ain't. Even if your preacher's a fornicator, it ain't all right. It's God's house. It ain't all right. It's not all right. You want a preacher that sins so you can get away with your sin. Well, may that sinner preacher clean it up so he can clean you up. That's what I did. I said that's what I did. The Lord cleaned me up. I'm cleaning you up. Fall in love.
the holiness of God covers the whole man. We ought to be sanctified in body and spirit. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. In body and spirit, the holiness of God covers us. Hallelujah.
God bless you. God bless you.